Which doll likes to clean the house? Who goes to work? <laughs> this one. A girly girl is like they're really into pink, purple, bright colours, fashion, shoes, clothes, all that stuff. And then a tomboy is like, it's, it's kind of like what boys do, but it's a girl. Both of my um, kids probably don't hear, you know, I guess the normative stereotypes about their gender expression. With Nava, my daughter, she always got compliments when she wore skirts and dresses and she wouldn't get those compliments when she was wearing tracky pants. And so I sort of started becoming aware of this so I made a point of whenever I would compliment her, not to compliment her for her appearance but to compliment her for something that she said or she did. I think that everyone is oppressed by gender roles in our society. I don't think that anyone is liberated by them. I think that every man in the world has been told that he's not man enough and every woman has been told that's unladylike or you shouldn't behave that way. So I think that trans people just tend to rebel against those expectations a little bit more. So you're this little girl and then you're doing, you're playing, you're playing, running around with your friends and then your parents say, hey, like, don't, don't, don't play so rough. That, that's not how a little girl plays. A little girl should sit down. A little girl should be nice. A little girl shouldn't be dirty. And you take these on after being so told so many times, you just take it on and you take in this information. And then you grow up to be a woman that has these, what I would call passive traits. I grew up as a young girl playing with dolls and Barbies and playing in a play kitchen and watching Disney princess movies, which completely enforce gender stereotypes. And I think that my parents didn't try and push that on me. It was just like a natural part of growing up as a young girl, like doing all those things. I always felt really restricted by the expectations that were placed on me as a woman and they didn't feel suitable for me at all. So I imagined that transitioning would feel comfortable for me, that once I was being treated as a man, that would be better for me and I would fit in better. But I realised that I just kind of moved from one very small gendered box to another one that was slightly bigger. But it was still really oppressive and I still really struggled in it. And I think that men really struggle with the standards that they're expected to face, as well as women. Something that, that teachers do is um, when you have a request, you make different requests of different genders. So for example, if I'm in a classroom and I need to move a table, I know that there's some teachers that might say, can I have a strong boy to move the table? And you won't say, can I have a strong girl to move the table? And you're implying that moving a table is, is a boy's role because it's a physical task. So I've, I've started saying, if I need help something, can I have a student to help me move this chair or move this table? Some people bully girls, like because the girls are wearing like boyish clothes. I think gender is a really hard thing to define and I don't think anyone has more answers than anyone else. I think everyone expresses their gender in really different ways. I think there's something inherent about what we feel in regards to our gender. I don't think it's purely socially constructed, but I do think that society puts a lot of categories and expectations onto us dependent on gender. So for me, I really struggle when people define themselves as a man or a woman because even though those are valid categories to define yourself as, it doesn't really give me any indication into what that person is like because between one woman and another there may be very different characteristics. So I tend to think that there are seven billion genders for every different person. I ran a party last weekend, it was a four-year-old girls disco party and I was putting glitter on all the girls faces and doing like pretty rainbows and there were boys there as well so I went up to them and I asked if the boys wanted glitter because maybe they did but they didn't want to speak out about it because they associated the glitter with the girls at the party and most of the boys were like oh no I don't want glitter but there were two young boys who came up to me they were about three or four and they asked if they could have glitter on their face so I was like of course but then I was like do you want blue glitter or green glitter? 
And then I went through my mind like what I had just done. I'd completely just said, do, they, do you want blue or green because they were boys and those are masculine colors or what we've brought up to know as masculine colors. So I think gender roles come from a lot of places. Obviously your parents, I think your friends, the media, everything you're exposed to shapes it. A lot of parents often say, oh, we raise both our children the exact same way and look how different they are. That shows that gender is biological. But I think what a lot of parents don't realise is that even though you think you're raising children the same way, you're not because A, they're exposed to a world around you that's very gendered and B, very subconsciously you have different expectations of children in terms of what they'll do or their abilities and the, the way they'll express their emotions. So I think there's, there's both a nature and a nurture element to it, but I think the nurture element is much larger. We can see this problem manifested in toy stores where you'll walk in and rather than there being just toys, there'll be pink and Barbies and blue and trucks and Nerf guns and scooters. Like, isn't that warped that a child will walk in and like a parent will go, where are the girls' toys or where are the boys' toys instead of just where are the toys and let their child choose what they want to play with. Let me hear how all the girls buy princesses and all the boys price to buy superheroes. Companies who make these try to trick the girls in, into buying the pink stuff instead of stuff that boys want to buy, right? Some girls like superheroes, some girls like princesses. It's just because Pink is kind of like a girly colour. You know, when I came out in 2013 as transgender, it was a really different climate. Like, there was no representation in mainstream media whatsoever. Nowadays, you've got Orange is the New Black with Laverne Cox, you've got Caitlyn Jenner everywhere. You have much more representation. There's a non-binary actor now. Let me uh, understand this and help everyone understand this. Yeah. Your character on the show is a non-binary, uh, identifies non-binary. Yes. And you also identify that way. Yes. Explain what that means. So non-binary is a term used by some people, myself included, who experience their gender identity as falling somewhere outside of the boxes of man or woman. Hello, I'm Taylor. My pronouns are they, theirs, and them. Okay. Whether we like to admit it or not, there's this unspoken punishment of like moving beyond norms like if i don't put on makeup or dress up for a party like my friends do because i don't want to or because i don't feel like that's me there's like sort of a i'm condemned for that which i think's part of the reason why people can't really push past their gender roles i think treating people as individuals and understanding that we are all a mosaic of femininity and masculinity and that we just have hobbies that aren't necessarily gendered and that colours don't have a gender and activities don't have a gender. I think that will really help to bring down gender stereotypes is to just see people as individuals and understand that they don't have to do something just because they're a boy or a girl. There's no law that boys can't wear girls clothes. There's no law that girls can't wear boys clothes. There's no law that um, boys can't play with Barbie dolls. There's no law that girls can play with trucks and trains and all that stuff. And they can ride skateboards because you can. The best way to combat gender stereotypes is to raise children who aren't pushed into boxes. I think our language is changing and shifting a lot and there's a lot more understanding and exposure. I mean I had a seven year old the other day use the word transgender and I was just blown away. So yeah, I do think that we're going to be more gender non-conforming in the future. I think there's a lot of cases where these gender stereotypes come from society and um, you've just got to chip away at them very, very slowly as they say, from little things, big things grow and hopefully eventually we will be in a more equal society but there's a long way to go yet.